there, I'm AJ, and today I'm gonna to share with you some tufting tips. I'm gonna walk us through some gun basics and a little bit about yarn and all the things that you'll need in order to create your first piece. So the last video that I did, I shared all the supplies that I use to create a tufted rug, and today I'm going to walk us through some of the first steps in the rug making process so you can get tufting. What I have here behind me is the starter kit from tuftinggun.com. This is the first frame and kit that I got, and it really contains everything you'll need to create your first project. Um, this is the first practice canvas that I use, so I thought it would be fitting to bring it back and uh, get started with you all today. The kit comes with this frame here, which is really easy to assemble. It also comes with tufting cloth, like this, and the gun. So I chose to go with a cut pile gun. Now they have one where it does both cut and loop pile, but I chose cut pile and I'm really happy with it. The cut pile gun creates a look like this. So it's pretty shaggy. Each piece of yarn is individually cut on the other side of the fabric. So it creates this kind of look. The loop pile gun will create more of a look that's similar to punch needling, where instead of cutting, it's just one continuous piece of yarn that is being pushed through and looped around. So you just get a little bit of a different look with, with that. Next, I want to talk about yarn. There are obviously a lot of options out there. When I first started, I bought a ton of beautiful wool yarn from tuftinggun.com. I actually did a lot of research to figure out what kind of yarn I ultimately wanted to use for my pieces. When I first went to go purchase yarn, I was actually pretty hesitant to buy wool. And the reason being is I've seen some horrific videos of sheep being sheared in a way that's unethical and really painful. So it made me nervous. It made me not feel quite right. But then when I looked at the alternatives, really the other options are wool, acrylic, or cotton. And the only two viable options for a rug that's going to last a long time are wool or acrylic. If you're making just like a wall hanging, then cotton will do just fine. My problem with acrylic was that it's synthetic. And being someone who really cares about the environment, that didn't feel great to me. The good news is the yarn available on tuftinggun.com is from New Zealand and it's ethically sourced and really good quality, but I didn't start there. So though I ended up buying a bunch of yarn, I realized pretty quickly that I didn't wanna waste my expensive, high quality yarn on projects that I was still learning with. This is actually the first rug I did. I just ended up going to a craft store and buying some really cheap acrylic yarn. It's really soft. I love the feel of acrylic yarn, but what what I did personally was just kind of promise myself that once I had the means to buy really high quality yarn that I would move in that direction. And so that's what I'm doing now. I do have kind of a stockpile of some acrylic yarns, but um, from here on out, now that I am able to, I'm going to just be using or just be purchasing wool and, and cotton. I know that there are some other wool suppliers out there, but to be honest, I'm still still kind of doing research. But luckily, tuftinggun.com has a ton of really cool colors. I mean, look at this neon yellow. It's at least a good starting point. Another really important thing to consider is the way that the yarn is spooled. The excellent thing about buying yarn from Tufting Gun and yarn that's on a cone like this is that this is going to spool really consistently. So the yarn is not going to have any trouble coming off of the yarn cone and you're less likely to get snags versus 
a bundle like this that you get at the craft store. I have played around with a bunch of different approaches to this, but I think if you're gonna buy yarn from the craft store, you absolutely wanna find a bundle that you can pull the yarn from the inside of the bundle. This here is a lot more consistent than having this end of the yarn where it has to wrap around. What I've done is just kind of like sat the bundle up vertically and then placed it through this feeder. Even then, sometimes the yarn gets snagged and it falls out of the gun. And in that case, you have to refeed the gun every single time it falls out, which takes a lot of time out of your workflow. So something that I have done, some might say is a tedious and pain, painful process, I will Cord, toilet paper rolls or the center of this is I think is a center of a saran wrap roll and I will use them to just manually hand spin a yarn bundle that's giving me trouble onto a more consistent feeder so this can sit here and again feed really consistently off of the cone so that it's just easier to create your piece in a timely manner so you're not having to refeed your gun every time it falls out. What you'll do is place it here on this nice little yarn stand and then these two pieces here are meant to kind of hold the yarn and also help facilitate that really consistent pull that we're, we're looking for. Next, let's talk about the gun. There are two things that you're gonna wanna keep in mind as you're beginning and as you're tufting. One of them is safety. You have to remember that this is a power tool. It's a pretty dangerous one, considering every time you're pulling the trigger with this cut pile gun, there's scissors that reach out and snip the yarn. It's designed so that the on-off switch is right here by your thumb. I obsessively turn my machine off when I'm not tufting. I even will unplug the machine when I am cleaning it or fixing it. You especially wanna make sure it's off when you're threading because this is where your fingers will be and you don't want anything bad to happen. The next thing you'll wanna consider is maintenance. Look, I'm not a power tool expert by any means, but what I did realize is as I was tufting and working on projects and using this machine for long periods of time, like it would start to get really hot. This is a machine that needs to be taken care of. I recently started being better about that. And the things that I will do is I will use a fluffy brush and sewing machine oil. And I actually walked through these a little bit in my last video about all the supplies you'll need to get started. As you can see, a lot of buildup will happen. Um, we have like some yarn buildup here and around here. And so this brush really is just to help remove some of that oily yarn buildup to keep it somewhat clean. And I think ultimately this is just gonna help with the wear and tear on the machine over time. So that's the first step. Next is I take this sewing machine oil and I honestly just kind of eyeball it, but any, play, any point that there's a piece that's moving frequently, I'll put some oil in there. I'll put some up here. <laughs> And then I'll just kind of give it a little run. And there we go, we're good to go. Ready to start tufting. The last piece I wanna add before we dive in is ergonomics. This is not something that I initially was concerned about, but as I've been tufting for a few months now, and often I will have long days where I'm tufting for hours. This has become increasingly important for my well-being. I've actually just started to wear a wrist brace, especially on my right wrist while I tuft. That's because I've been experiencing some wrist soreness. This is a heavy machine. Having some extra support around your wrists I think will, will really help over time. In terms of posture, I really try to make sure that I am engaging my core and that I'm using the strength within my shoulders and arms so that I don't get a sore back. You will know when you've been tufting for hours in a day that posture is super important and you really want to make sure you're, you're engaging your whole body and doing all of those ergonomically correct moves so that 
you can tuft for hours and not get hurt. Here we are at our frame and the setup is really going to depend on the space that you have available. I have mine propped up on a table because I prefer to stand while I tuft and I've got some yoga blocks placed behind this frame just to um, make sure that there's plenty of distance between the frame and the wall so that the gun doesn't puncture the wall in any way. You just want to make sure whatever you do in your setup leaves the frame super stable. As you can see, I've already stretched the cloth across the frame, which is really easy to do. There are these teeth that grab onto the cloth and allow you to kind of pull it tight. The fabric from tuftinggun.com has these lines that go down, which are really helpful to kind of guide your eye a bit. They're also helpful when you're stretching the fabric because you can make sure that the lines are, are pretty even. I'm going to grab my trusty little threader tool. This is just a, a threader that I got in a punch needle kit and I've attached this string to it so I don't lose it. I'm always losing it. We're ready to get started. We have our yarn over here. And now I'm gonna take this string and thread it through my gun. It's gonna go through this hole. And second, it'll go through this hole. Here we are. So the two important things for a consistent rug are consistent pressure and consistent yarn tension. So I'm just gonna do a few lines here. Okay. As you can see, there's a grid here. Obviously doing vertical and horizontal lines are going to be much easier and much cleaner. I recommend starting with just vertical and horizontal lines. This, these are some of the first ever pieces that I made, so it takes some practice. So this handle here essentially just spins all the way around, and this is really comes in handy when you're guiding the directions. One thing that you can do is if you're doing vertical lines, you can pivot and move to change the direction that you're going. So you can go. So that comes in handy when you're filling in space and you won't have to worry about having this yarn here wasted. As you can see, straight lines, they're pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, you can also do horizontal lines fairly easily. You'll notice here that there's a few pieces missing. To be honest, I'm not quite sure why that happens, but sometimes it has to do with tension and sometimes it has to do with pressure. And so when it does happen, you can easily just stick the gun right back in here and fill in that gap. Next, we have curves. Now, curves are a little bit more difficult. The way that I've learned how to do curves is by going really, really slow. This is where this pivot will guide you um, when you're doing curves. So I'm just gonna do some random squiggles. that was me moving pretty fast but when I was first starting out and even still today I will move really slow around edges just to make sure that the line is really clean like that it takes time to learn how to to use the gun, but like I said, this is one of the first rugs that I made and I'd say it turned out pretty well. 
Don't let the gun intimidate you. It's super fun and so satisfying. I love seeing all of the questions that you guys have been asking. Soon I would love to do some kind of Q&A video to answer some of your more specific questions, but I'm still learning with all of you. There's actually an online community called Tough the World, which I will link below where you can ask more questions and kind of like see the work that other tufters have been doing and get really inspired. One thing I will say about this tufting community is that everyone is so helpful. Yeah, it makes me happy to see all the interest in it. I look forward to seeing what you all make. Feel free to connect with me on Instagram and I would love to see all the stuff that you guys are creating. You can use code MAGIC15 to get 15% off your order at tuftinggun.com. They pretty much are a one-stop shop for everything that you would need to get started. And in the meantime, good luck on your projects and I'll talk to you soon.